Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men, and who fights a never-ending battle against crime and injustice, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Today begins for Superman an adventure which, if not the oddest in his career, is certainly the most mysterious. An adventure filled with action, suspense, and some of the strangest characters we have yet met. Our story begins in the office of Editor White at the Daily Planet. Listen. Eh? Oh, come in, Ken. Come in, Jimmy. All packed and ready to start, I see. Yes, Chief. Jimmy and I have come to say goodbye. Shiver my timbers if we haven't. What? My duffel's all ready and we're all set to shovel off. (laughs) Listen to the old salt. Old salt. Oh, gosh, Mr. Kent, if we're going around the world on the last of the clipper ships, i got to talk so the crew will understand me, don't I? They'll understand you without all that nautical gibberish. Now, sit down, you two. The Fire M doesn't sail for another hour. I've got some things to talk over with you, Kent. Gosh, Mr. White, we've got to get on board and stow our duck. If you don't stow your talk, young man, you won't go aboard at all. Ah, <laughs> now, don't mind Jimmy, Chief. He's just bubbling over with excitement and anxious to get started. Now, what did you want to talk to me about? I just want to be sure, Kent. Do you understand what you're to do on this voyage you're taking? Oh, now, Chief, we've been over this a hundred times since you first thought of the idea. And we'll go over it a hundred more if I think it necessary. I want to be sure you understand the articles you're going to write from every angle. Sometimes, Chief, I find myself feeling sorry the owner of this paper ever bought the Clara M. Oh, gosh, I don't. I think of the places we're going to. South America, Borneo, India, Africa. Gosh, I get so excited I can hardly talk. Blow me down if I don't. (laughs) I'll blow you down with pleasure if you don't shut up. Yes, sir. Now, Kent, as you know, this is all in the way of a publicity campaign to build circulation for the paper. Fire M is the last of the old clipper ships. That's going to be your lead. Last of the clipper ships. I've got it. Into these articles you're going to write, you've got to put all the romance, all the color of the Clara M's past, contrasting that with the future that awaits her. Yes. This is her last voyage, Kent. When you return with her, Mr. Barwick, the owner of the paper... Plans to tie her up to a dock and turn her into a marine museum. Sure, Chief. But look, I know all this, and we're anxious to get down to the ship. I want to be sure that you know it. Barwick's all excited about this idea of his. And these articles you are going to write, Kent, uh, telling how it feels to be making this romantic voyage in the last of the clipper ships, have got to be great stuff. Now, just let's be sure you've got your facts straight. The Clara M was built in 1889. Uh, 1879, uh, Mr. White. Uh, excuse me. What's that? Uh, yes, sir. Her keel was laid in June of the year 1878 at Aberdeen, Scotland, and she cleared from that city for the first time in August of 1879. She was built for speed in the China tea trade. Her hull is of teak, her decks are mahogany, and... (laughs) All right, Jimmy. All right, I guess you'll concede, Chief. There's hardly anything you can tell us about the Clara M. Mm, Well, uh... Excuse me. Yes? Who wants to see me? Uh, Mr. Barnaby. What do you want? Oh, I won't say, eh? I see. I'll tell him to wait. Well, Kent, it looks as if you and uh, young Moby Dick here have everything straight. But all you've got into the articles you send back. Make people buy the Daily Planet just to read what you've got to say about the last of the clipper ships. Is that understood? Don't worry, Chief. Uh, well, I, I won't be seeing you two for a long time. Good luck and bon voyage. Thanks, Chief. All right, Jim, pick up your duffel and let's shove off. Aye, aye, sir. Oh, uh, tell Miss Kenyon to send Mr. Barnaby in, will you? All right. Goodbye, Chief. Goodbye, all right. sir. Goodbye, goodbye. Miss Kenyon, you can send Mr. Barnaby in. Uh, I hate to see those two go. I'm going to miss them. Thought I'd never let them know it. Well, I guess I'd better... Uh... Ahoy, mate. Oh, what the... Oh, uh, Mr. Barnaby? Aye, same. Oh, sit down. Get a hold of the yarn, sure. I'll, uh, I'll move this chair back from your desk, you might see, and I've got to keep my leg out in front of me, and I'll need the room. Your <laughs> leg? Aye, mate. It's made of cheek. The finest this side of the China Sea. That's why I'm called Teak. Teak Barnaby. Uh, count of my leg. Oh, I say. Uh, well, uh, what can I do for you? Yeah. Being a good seafarer man, I'll steer my course straight to the point. The uh, owner of this newspaper, Mr. Barwick, bought a clipper ship named the Clara M. And uh, I want to buy her. I'm afraid she's not for sale, Mr. Barnaby. Dick Barnaby was never one for bargaining, sir. So just forget the preliminaries and name your price. I'll meet it. I meant what I said, Barnaby. The Clara M is not for sale. 
Mr. Barwick bought the ship for the one purpose of developing a publicity campaign to boost the paper circulation. As a matter of fact, he's sailing within the hour for a trip around the world with one of my best reporters on board. Play to, matey. Tick Barnaby's always got what he went after. Now, I'll pay you any price. You're yet. wasting my time and your own, Barnaby. I repeat, the Clara M is not for sale. Matey, everything has its price. Yes, if it's for sale. Now, look here, Barnaby. Just why are you uh, so anxious to buy the Clara M? I have my reasons. What reasons? I don't like your tone, matey. You make it sound as if wanted to buy a sailing vessel was a crime. I never said that. Aye, but you implied it. Now I'll trim your sheets and listen to me. I want the Clara I am, and I intend having her. What my reasons may or may not be is no wind out of your sails. So you'd best not inquire into them. Now then, what's your price? Oh, of all the colossal nerve, I, I think it's time you left. You won't sell? I will not. I'll get out. You're making a mistake, matey. A great mistake. That's my lookout. Good day, sir. Good day, matey. If you care to reconsider... Good day. You've made a mistake, matey. Why, heaven, if you don't get out of here... Me too. I'm shoving off. Scott, Captain Hawkins, we're supposed to sail in less than an hour. You still haven't signed on a crew. There's a new batch of men on their way over from the Seaman's Rest, Mr. Kent. We won't have any trouble getting a crew. Gosh, Captain Hawkins, we expected to find you aboard the Clara M with a crew and everything, all set to sail. I know, I know. What seems to be the trouble, Captain? Why, there's no trouble, Mr. Kent. It's just that men don't go in sail anymore these days. Sailing means hard work. Harder work than you'd find aboard modern ships, and the accommodations aren't any too good. But, uh, <clears throat> Mr. Kent, here come the men I was speaking about. We'll have a crew in no time at all. Well, well we've come over from the seaman's rest to sign on, sir. Line up before the desk, you men. Yes, sir. One at a time. All right. Now then, you. What's your name? Patrick Finity, sir. What bird? Abel Seaman, sir. Sign here. Right, There's sir. a pen. Thank you, sir. And uh, what would be the name of the ship, sir? The name? Oh, the Clara M. Sign here. Begging your pardon, sir. I've uh, changed my mind. I won't be sailing with you. As you like. Uh, just a moment, Captain. Why won't this man... It's all right, Mr. Kent. Don't worry. Next. All right, sir. Your name? Angus McKenzie. What birth? Abel Seaman. Sign here, mister. Ah, right here. Aye, right, sir. Go ahead, man. Finish signing. Uh, I beg pardon, sir. Did I hear the name Clara M? You did? What of it? Nothing, sir, only. I'm no signing on. Uh, just a minute. Now, now, Mr. Candy. Why won't you sign on? What's the trouble? There's no trouble, sir. I've changed my mind, that's all. Looks like they've all changed their minds. They're walking out. Oh, I see. Captain Hawkins. It's as I say, Mr. Kent. They know the Clara M is a sailing vessel, and the minute they hear the name, they decide it's too much work. There seems to be more behind it than that. Now, now, please don't worry. I'll get a crew. Just leave it to me. We may not sail within the hour, but we'll sail. Well, all right. Now, Jimmy, since it looks as if we're going to be here for some time, I'd suggest we drop over to that cafeteria at the end of the dock there and have a sandwich. Okay, Mr. Kent. I am feeling a little hungry. Uh, all right. We won't be long, Captain. Take your time, Mr. Kent. And don't worry. I may have a crew signed on by the time you get back. I see another batch of men coming this way now. Well, I hope so, Captain. Feel better, Jim? I sure do, Mr. Kent. That sandwich and milk sure hit the spot. Good. Let's get back to the dock, huh? Yes, sir. Well, I wonder if Captain Hawkins has signed on anyone as yet. So do I. Sure was funny, those men changing their minds the minute they heard the name Clara M. Well, Captain Hawkins' reason may be the right one. It may be that they just... Ahoy, Kent! Ashore there! Ahoy! What 
Doctor? Oh, it's Captain Hawkins, Mr. Kent. There he is at the rail of the car I am. Oh, what's he doing on board? I expected him to be on the in the dock office. Ahoy, Captain! What is it? Come aboard, man, and hurry. We're making ready to sail. Uh, you mean you've got a crew? I have indeed. Well, I'll be... Come on, Jim. Aye, aye, sir. Yeah, watch the gangplank there. Watch the gangplank. Yeah. Well, Mr. Kent, are you surprised? Surprised is hardly the word, Captain. How did you manage it? Luck, Mr. Kent, luck. That batch of men coming in as you were leaving signed on, every one. What? As fine a crew as you'd ever want to see. The first mate's actually been in sail back in the old days. Huh? Hey, you'll want to know him. I- I'll call him over. Oh, uh, you mustn't mind his looks, and I uh, I wouldn't pay too much attention to his leg. His leg? Yes, he's uh, got a wooden leg. Uh, here he comes now. Well, matters are beginning to take a strange turn. What lies behind Mr. Barnaby signing on the Clara M as first mate? And why was it so difficult to sign a crew on the old clipper ship? Be sure to hear the next thrill-packed episode of our mystery with Superman. Tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Up in the sky! Look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men, and who fights a never-ending battle against crime and injustice, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. In our last episode, we heard how Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen were about to set sail for a cruise around the world on the Clara M, last of the old clipper ships. After Kent and Jimmy left Editor White to go aboard the boat, Teak Barnaby, a one-legged sailor, called on White and attempted to buy the Clara M at any price. Turned down, Barnaby stormed from the office. Meanwhile, at the waterfront, Clark Kent and Jimmy discover that Captain Hawkins of the Clara M is having trouble signing on a crew. For some strange reason, men refuse to sail on the Clara M. Kent and Jimmy leave, and then, on their return, find that a crew has been signed. Listen. Hi, Mr. Kent. As fine a crew as you'd want to see anywhere. The first mate's actually been in sail back in the old days. You'll want to know him. I- I'll call him over. Oh, uh, you mustn't mind his looks, and I, uh, I wouldn't pay too much attention to his leg. His leg? Aye. It's wooden, you see. Made of teak wood. Oh, here he comes now. Uh, Mr. Barnaby. Uh, Mr. Barnaby, over this way. Holy mackerel, Mr. Kent. Look at that. A real wooden leg. You wanted me, sir? Aye, mister, I did. I want to make you acquainted with Mr. Kent and young Jimmy Olsen. Mr. Kent is the reporter I told you about who's going to write that series of articles about the last voyage of the Clara M. Pleasure, Mr. Barnaby. Well, it is that, matey. So we're to have a lot of more, too, are we? Aye, sir. I'm coming, too. <laughs> well, keep your ears open and your eyes peeled, laddie, and you'll learn a lot. Blow me down if a voyage in an old windjammer like the Clara M ain't the finest education a boy can have. I'll try to learn, sir. Mr. Barnaby, we'd best be underway. There's a freshening breeze, and we can just catch the tide if we're quick about it. Aye, sir. We'll weigh anchor. I'm the winners! I'm the winners! Holy mackerel, what a voice! <laughs> the first mate on an old wind jammer needs a good pair of lungs, laddie. Ah, it would appear that way. Break sail! Break sail! Put your backs into your two crawling catfish. On the line there, you! All together now! He! He! Hey, you over to me, sir. What's doing, man? Where are we? Where are we? Cut on me for a Chinese pirate. I've yet to see the likes of such a crow. Gosh, Mr. Kent, listen to him. Your sails are filling, Mr. Barnaby. Hey, sir. You on the wheel there. That's the answer. Well, we're on the way, sir. Take over, Mr. Barnaby. Your course is due south. Aye, aye, sir. (laughs) 
And so, with the mysterious peg leg Mr. Barnaby aboard, the Clara M. set sail on her last voyage around the world. Sails billowing in a spanking breeze, she cuts the water southward bound. Night falls over the sea, and in the cabin of Captain Hawkins, Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen sit down to their first dinner aboard ship. Oh, gosh, I'm so hungry I could eat a whale. Well, dig in, lad, dig in. Well, there's an extra plate set, I see, Captain. Aye, Mr. Barnaby will be along shortly. He's a strange sort of man, Captain. Aye, aye, he is, but you'll find many a queer in at sea, Mr. Kent. He seems pleasant enough, but there's something in the way he looks at you. I can't quite put my finger on it. Sounds like him coming now. Aye, it's Barnaby, all right. Ahoy, mate. Oh, Barnaby. 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 Well, lad, how are you finding your first meal at sea? It sure is exciting. <laughs> Gosh, with the creaking of this old ship and those oil lamps swinging back and forth above us, it's like a scene out of a movie. <laughs> is that it is? Fog clearing any, Mr. Barnaby? No, it's thickening, and that's a fact. Making up soupy, I'd say. I've given orders to use the horn if it gets any thicker. Aye. Well, you seem quiet, Mr. Kent. Hmm? Not saying much. Oh, uh... I've been wondering ever since we sailed, Captain. Can't quite understand how you managed to sign on a crew in such quick time. Especially when you'd been having such trouble getting a crew before. Well, as I explained to you, Mr. Barnaby and the rest of the men came along at that precise moment, all looking for berths. Aye, a piece of luck, I'd say. Well, uh, this is the first I've heard of you having trouble signing on a crew, Captain. A yeah, little, not much. Well, I'd lay most of them had heard the rumor about the Clara M. Rumor? Oh, what kind of a rumor, Mr. Barnaby? Gosh, what's that? <laughs> That's a foghorn, lad. Fog must be thickening. Well, now, as, uh, as to that rumor... You'd best leave off that, mister. It's nothing but waterfront gossip. I am therefore harmless to the lad. You see, lad, every ship has its superstition attached to it. And the Clara M is no exception. What sort of a superstition, Mr. Barnaby? You haven't heard about the Whistler? The Whistler? Aye, lad. Oh, it ain't much to tell. The legend has it that uh, many years ago, the first mate, uh, like myself, had a fondness for Whistler. Whistler like a bird, he could. You could always tell when he was about, uh, for he was never done whistling. Well, as the legend has it, he had taken the wheel one night... In a howling gale. One of them nights when the sea's kicking up, hurling wave after wave over the decks. Well, lad, a first mate took the wheel that night and was never heard from again. What happened to him? Well, there's some as say he was washed overboard, and some as say he just vanished. But every sailor man's agreed that he still sails his spirit with a Clara M. And that sometimes you can hear him whistling. Gosh. There goes that foghorn again. Uh, do you believe the whistler still sails on the Clara M, Mr. Barnaby? Of course not, of course not. A silly superstition, lad. Nothing more, nothing more. Why did you sign on for this trip, Mr. Barnaby? Hmm? Well, Mr. Kidd, I, I needed a berth. And I take no stock in superstition. Does the whistler come at any time, Mr. Barnaby, or or does his whistle mean something? Well, I'd just said... Mr. That... Barnaby, I've had enough of this stupid talk. Why, sir, I was That really... will be all, mister. Yes, sir. Uh, more potatoes, lad? No, thank you. Gosh, it's the whistler. Nonsense, lad. It's just Whoever's wh whistling is standing right outside on deck. I suggest we... Wait, matey. He's moving off. Come on, follow me. If it's one of the crew, I want to know about it. Are you coming, Captain? Aye, I'll come. But it's nothing but Tommy Rot, I tell you. Tommy Rot. Seems to be off down the deck there, toward the bow. Come along. You can't see your hand in front of you in this fog. Whoever's whistling is getting farther away all the time. Let's hurry, mate. We don't want to lose him. Gosh, with this fog and that strange whistling up ahead, 
Why should anybody be whistling at a time like this? It may be a warning, lad. A warning? Oh, now I've done it when I've had orders from Captain Hawkins to say never a word. You mean that whistling may be a warning of something about to happen? Aye. She said, mate, that when you hear the whistler... Wait. It's gone. You don't hear it any longer. Neither do I. It seems to... What's that? Cry for help. Behind us. Where's the captain? He must have dropped back. Come along, Red. Mr. Kane. You may be right with him, Jim. He's beginning to look more and more like a job for Superman. I've got a feeling Captain Hawkins went overboard, and I'd better check on that right now. Ah, good thing my eyes can pierce this fog. Strange things happening on board this ship. Very strange. Wait. There he is. Floundering in the water. Turn of us. Only one thing to do. Get him out over the water and bring him back here on deck before he knows what's happened to him. Up! Up! And away! This way, Jimmy. Mr. Barnaby, I found the captain. Oh, what? What happened to him? Well, uh, what I'd like to know. You're, you're, you're ringing wet. Uh, I must have slipped and gone over the rail. Yeah, well, perhaps you were pushed. No, no, I, I fell. But holy mackerel, if you fell overboard, how'd you get back on deck? Uh, I, I don't know. Somehow, I, I remember someone holding me up in the water. Then and everything went black. Right. I'd best take him along, sir. Come along. I'll give you a hand. Need any help, Mr. Barnaby? Oh, no. I can manage. I'll take him. There, we'll have no fear. There you are. Right. Hey, there. There's me. What do you make of all this? Whistler and then Captain Hawkins falling overboard. I don't know, Jimmy. One thing I do know. I don't think Captain Hawkins fell overboard. Huh? No sea captain ever fell off a ship. A deliberate attempt was made on his life, and he knows it, yet he tried to pretend otherwise. Gosh. That doesn't make sense. That's not the only thing that doesn't make sense. There's something strange about Captain Hawkins signing on this crew. There's something strange about our first mate, Mr. Barnaby. But what? I don't know, Jimmy. I'm going to make it my business to find out. Seven bells, all well. Yes, seven bells, but all is not well. Not well at all. What is the strange mystery aboard the Clara M? What truth is there to the legend of the Whistler? Strange and exciting adventures await our friends aboard the old clipper ship. So be sure to hear the next thrilling episode with Superman. Tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Up in the sky! Look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men, and who fights a never-ending battle against crime and injustice, Disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Kent and Jimmy are now on a cruise around the world on the Clara M, last of the Clipper ship. Just as soon as the vessel got underway, strange things began to happen on board. In our last episode, we heard Teak Barnaby, mysterious peg-legged first mate, relate the tale of the Whistler, the spirit of a whistling seaman lost overboard many years ago, who was said to return to the Clara M and whistle the warning of impending trouble. Just as Barnaby finished his story, an eerie whistle was heard. Shortly afterward, Captain Hawkins was lost overboard, but fortunately was rescued by Superman. We join them now. Kent is busy banging out a story while seated on the deck of the Clara M, southbound for Panama. Listen. And who can say that we did not hear the whistler? Certainly, it was not imagination on our part. His strange whistle came to us on deck and then receded from us. I wonder, shall we hear it again? 
whether we do or not, no doubt exists that there are many adventures in store for us on our trip around... Hi, mate. Huh? Oh, hello, Jimmy. Just banging out the last few lines of my first article for the Daily Planet. You sure ought to have enough to say in it. Boy, the things that have been happening aboard this ship. Well, I've had to play some of it down, such as the captain falling overboard. Play it down? Mm -hmm. What for? Well, in the first place, it would... This wouldn't do to say the captain had fallen overboard because that never happened. In the second place, he didn't fall. Oh, but he did, Mr. Kent. Now, he... Jimmy, the captain didn't just fall. He was pushed or thrown overboard. But he himself said... I that... know, I know. That's what bothers me. Something strange about Captain Hawkins, Jim. As a matter of fact, there seems to be something strange about practically everything aboard this ship. Oh, you mean the whistler, huh? Well, that's one of them. I said in my article here that it might have been our imagination playing tricks, but... Well, we both know, Jim, that we did hear that whistle last night. We sure did. Gosh, I've never heard anything so ghostly and, and eerie. Mm, it was all of that. Just remember one thing, Jim. There are no such things as ghosts. Yeah, I know, but... Boy, if Superman were with us on this trip, he'd solve this mystery of the whistler in no time. <laughs> you still believe that Superman fairy tale? I say you go again, Mr. Kent. I tell you, Superman does... All right, does... Jim, all right. We won't argue about it. Finish your lessons for today? Yes, sir. I solved those algebra equations you gave me, and... Finish my English lesson. Sure. I wrote a composition about Teak Barnaby. Oh, character sketch of the first mate, eh? What did you say about him? Well, I just put down exactly what I think about him. I said he was a fierce-looking man with a wooden leg and that he looked like he'd make a swell pirate. That he was a swell guy ah, and... easy there, Jimmy. You're overworking that word, swell. It's slang, you know, and you mustn't use it too much. Gee, that's right. I'll watch it, Mr. Kent. Good. Oh, say, there's Captain Hawkins up ahead with a helmsman. Let's go have a word or two with him, huh? Sure. Say... Do you still think it was kind of queer of Teak Barnaby signing on the way he did? Something funny about that whole setup, Jimmy. Don't forget, Captain Hawkins had spent days trying to get a crew. No one would sign on. And suddenly, within an hour, Teak Barnaby signs on, and with him, an entire crew. It does seem kind of funny. I like him, Noel, and yet sometimes I get a feeling when he's looking at me with those burning eyes of his that... Well, it's hard to explain. Yeah, I know what you mean. Hello there, Mr. Kent. Jimmy. Hi there, Captain. Captain. Beautiful day. Aye, perfect sailing weather. And the old Perry M hasn't lost any of her spark. She answers to your hand like a racing shell. And Jim, lad, can you box the compass for me? Oh, gosh, not yet, Captain Hawkins. I had a lot of other studying to do this morning, but I'll get to it this afternoon. Have you seen Mr. Barnaby about? Aye, Mr. Kent, I have. He's aloft in the crow's nest. Oh. Aloft? How on earth did he get there? <laughs> if it's this wooden leg you're thinking of, forget it. It doesn't bother him a bit. Dick Barnaby is as much at home in the rigging as he is on deck. Hey, look, laddie, how would you like to take the wheel? Me? Aye. Oh, gosh. Helmsman, let the lad take over. Uh, Captain, are you sure it'll be all right? Aye, she handles like a baby, Mr. Kent. Nothing to fear. Now, keep both hands on the wheel now, Jim, lad. Gosh. What? She's alive. I can feel a whole ship pulsing and pulling. Aye, lad. You've got to take the wheel to know your vessel. <laughs> easy there, lad. Easy, steady as she goes. Gosh, you sail up there started to flap something off. Uh, you've got to keep the wind aft the beam, lad. Oh, oh yes, sir. Uh, aye, sir. That is... Uh, before you let Jim do any real steering, Captain, you better explain most of these nautical expressions to us. Uh, uh, if we're not careful, the little... be... uh, Quick, man! Uh, 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 what happened? Uh, that belaying pin came down from aloft. Took the deck where I'd been standing. Mr. Kent, if you hadn't pulled me out of the way, I'd be a dead man. Oh, there, you blasted been there in front of a prison. Oh! That's true, Mr. Barnaby. On deck, you... you. Oh, if only the lad wasn't here so I could express myself. Here comes Mr. Barnaby now. Guys, look at him slide down that rope. Sheep, lad, sheep, not rope. And mind your helm. Support, support. I don't know what to... Helmsman, take over. Oh, all right, lad, I've got it. Well, mister, what have you to say for yourself? Beg your pardon, Captain. I don't think you mean it. You know what I mean right enough, Mr. Barnaby. That belaying pin fell from aloft. It would have killed me if Mr. Kent here hadn't pulled me out of the way. Oh, how he saw it coming at me. The belaying pin fell from aloft, eh? Well, now let me see. Well, blast my eyes if it ain't gone. Gone? What's gone, Mr. Barnaby? Why, sir, I stuck a belaying pin in my belt before going aloft, and it ain't there now. Must have... uh, must have fallen out. Such carelessness is inexcusable, man. I'll not have it aboard my ship. You understand? Aye, sir. Blast my eyes. I can't fathom it. I've never dropped a belaying pin before. Be careful you don't again. Huh? Oh. Aye, sir. I want the foretop and the staple drop. 
Lay forward to the men, Mr. Barnaby. Aye, sir, aye. Wait, sir. Wait. Well, I, I can't thank you enough for saving my life, Mr. Kent. I must say, you were on the alert. Yes, Captain. Something we'd all better learn to do aboard this ship. Well, your answers to those algebra equations are perfect, Jim. Now, suppose we examine you on English history. Oh, sir. I'll do this quickly. It's how much time you were in bed. Yeah. I sure am sleepy. It must be the salt air or something. Mm, probably. All right, now, English history. What does 1066 mean to you? Oh, gosh, that's easy. In 1066, Edward the Confessor died and Harold was chosen king. During that same year, Harold defeated the King of Norway at Stamford Bridge. Then later, William, the Duke of Normandy, defeated Harold near Hastings. And that's really the most important thing that happened in 1066, because it marked the beginning of the Norman conquest of England. That's fine, Jimmy. Now, tomorrow I want you to read the next chapter, which takes up the completion of the Norman conquest. Okay, but right now, Mr. Kent, if you don't mind, I'm going to hop into bed. I'm kind of tired. All right, Jimmy. I'm going to step out on deck for a breath of air before I turn in. Uh huh. Well, good night. Good night, Jim. Ah, yeah, it's good. Beautiful night. Now I'll just take a walk about deck. Four bells. Ten o'clock. Funny, I can't get that incident of this afternoon out of my mind. Doesn't make sense. Barnaby letting a belaying pin fall like that and pretending he didn't know it had fallen. Hello. Sounds like Barnaby now. Talking to someone in the shadow of the picture. I don't think it would hurt to find out what he's saying. I'll just slip it all quiet. Hello, Barnaby. That understood? You'll do as you're told. I'm telling you, I heard it. Fine as day it was. A gosh, they whistle if ever I heard one. It took me a couple of bulls to ship down. If you can't talk them, you ought to get over to help me. Mention that name of bones again, and I'll break your neck. My name's Barnaby aboard the ship. Keep Barnaby, and don't you forget it. Barnaby, I'm bound as all one with me. As long as I get off this tub. Blast my eyes, lie me out of good mind. Now, you listen. I'm paying you and every man jack aboard a good price for what you're doing. And I'm not having you still in your mouth about ghosts and such things. You'd best take care, Limey. Or it'll go hard with you. Oh, it was Barney to throw on the ship in the first place. You're on now, and you'll do as I say. I'll get below. Let me take your cover. Get below. I... Fire my plan, will you? Not while I'm alive and kicking. Oh. Is that you, Mr. Kern? Uh, yes, Barnaby. Good evening. Taking the air, are you? Before turning in? Yes. Well, good night to you, sir. Good night, Barnaby. Good night. Ten sixty six, William the Conqueror. Battle of Gosh. I've been trying to get to sleep ever since Mr. Kent left the cabin over an hour ago. Thought I was sleepy, too. All those dates of English history keep running through my mind. Gee. Kind of mysterious playing here in this cabin with the creaking. What it sounded like. It is a whistler. Oh, now it's moving off down the deck. Gosh, I'm scared. But I can't let that stop me. Got to investigate. Got to find out whether the whistler is human or... Whether it's a ghost. Yeah. Got to pull myself together and... Follow that whistle. Well, the plot certainly thickens. What will happen to Jimmy as he follows the whistler? Will he solve the mystery? And what was the meaning of the conversation between Barnaby and Limey? Be sure to hear the next thrilling episode of our mystery story with Superman. Tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman!
Look at this guy. Look. It's a bird. It's a plane. It's Superman. And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men, and who fights a never-ending battle against crime and injustice, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Taking a round-the-world cruise on the Clara M., last of the old flipper ships, Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen have met with some very baffling adventures. In our last episode, we overheard with Kent a strange conversation between Keith Barnaby, the peg-legged first mate, and one of the crew. A conversation which told us that the crew were working for Barnaby and not for Captain Hawkins. Our episode ended, Jimmy Olsen, lying on the bed in his cabin, was trying unsuccessfully to go to sleep when... But wait. Listen. Uh, 1066, William the Conqueror. Still gun and all those dates of English history keep running through my mind. I'm not hating. Oh, gosh. It sure is kind of mysterious lying here in this cabin with the creaking and the... What? That sounded like... It is. It's the whistler. Now, now it's moving off down the deck. Gosh, I'm scared. I can't let that stop me. We've got to find out who that whistler is, that's all. We've got to prove it isn't the spirit of a whistling seaman who was washed overboard years ago, like Teak Barnaby says. Yeah. i got to pull myself together and follow that whistle. It's moving up forward. Gosh, it's kind of eerie out here. Maybe I better go get Mr. Kent. But if I do that, the whistle may stop the way I did the first time we heard it. Better. Wait. There's somebody climbing up into the rigging. You! Stop! Stop where you are! Wherever he is, he's right up there above me. Well, I can't climb any further than the top of the mast, so I'm going to climb up there after Gosh. It's hotter than I thought. The rigging seems like it was alive. Oh. I almost slipped in. Shall we figure? Right above me. It's like we've stopped. It's not going any higher. Hey! Aloft there! Come on down! You're caught and you can't get away! Right above me now. It's just dark there. I can't see him. Just a second. Oh! My hand! Hey, stop it! You're stepping on my hand! I said stop it! I can't hold on! You hear? I'll fall! Stop! I'm falling! <laughs> Oh. I've got you. Hold tight. You're safe now. You're safe. Superman. Super. Oh. Good thing I was walking about the deck and heard him calling. Oh, what on earth he was doing up in the rigging. I'd better get him down on deck again. Now. Down. Uh, kid's fainted. Better get him back to the cabin as Clark Kent. Oh, there. What is it? Uh, this way, Barnaby. Something's happened to Jimmy. Huh? Oh, bless my eyes. The lad. Well, what is it? I don't know. I found him lying on the deck here as I came around. Oh, he's out colder than the mackerel. Better take him below. No, his cabin will do. I'll carry him. You lead the way, Mr. Kent. All right. Uh, you got your lad. Can't uh, imagine what could have happened to him. Oh, we'll know as soon as he comes around. Ah, here's the cabin. Yeah. Put him on the bed there. I'll get some water. Well, uh, hey, look at his hands. They're bruised. Skin. Broken in places, too. Yeah, it looks as if they've been stepped on. That's oh, funny. The whistler. We've got to follow. We've got to find out. The whistler? Flash oh. my eyes, Mr. Kent. I, I do believe All right, it. now, Jim, snap what? out of it. Come on, now. Oh. oh. It's you, Mr. Kent. Oh. What happened to you, lad? Uh, who done this to you? The whistler. I was trying to go to sleep when I heard him whistling outside my cabin. I followed him. I saw somebody go up into the rigging. When, when I got close to him, he stepped on my hands. I had to let go. What? You mean you fell from the rigging onto the deck? We'd best call the captain to look him over, Mr. Kent. If any bones is broken. No, bro- no, I, I didn't hit the deck. Superman caught me as I was falling. Superman? And who might he be? Well, I'm afraid he's pretty much a character in Jimmy's imagination, but uh, Gosh, Mr. Kent, you, you've got to believe me. He came flying through the air as I was falling and... Oh, easy does it, matey. 
I've heard many a wild sailor's yarn, but these fates are all. A man that can fly, eh? Boy, lad, you've been dreaming. I'm telling the truth. How did my hands get this way, then, if they weren't stepped on? How'd I get down onto the deck without being hurt? Hey, the lad got something there, Mr. Kent. I'd best look to the rigging and see if there's anyone up there. No, no, you stay here. I'll go. Hey, Mr. Kent, however you'll have it. I'll be back in a while. Oh, hey, Mr. Kent, that you? Yes, Captain. I just heard about the lad was coming to see what it's all about. Well, we found him lying on deck, unconscious. He thought he heard the whistler and followed him up into the rigging. I've just come out to investigate. The whistler, eh? Uh-huh. Uh, it's beyond me. The lad's either having dreams. Or... He wasn't dreaming, Captain, and you know it. Eh, hey, what's that? Something very strange going on aboard this ship, Captain. And if you're not aware of it, you're not the man I think you are. I don't like your tone, Mr. Kent. I'm master of this vessel, and I, I won't no stand... I have no disrespect to your office, Captain. But it seems to me you're deliberately closing your eyes to a number of things that have happened on board. What things, Mr. Kent? What things? The whistler, for one. When Barnaby told us that legend last night about the spirit of a whistling sailorman haunting this ship, you tried to laugh it off. And then we heard the whistler. We didn't imagine it, Captain. We heard it. You and Barnaby and Jimmy and myself. I, I no denying that. Yeah, but you do deny that following that you were either pushed or thrown overboard. That you'd be dead now if I... Well, that is... Uh... If what, Mr. Kent? Well, if, if, if somebody hadn't miraculously saved you. You say I was pushed overboard, Mr. Kent. I say I fell. We won't argue it, Captain. Well, I can't pick out anyone or anything up in the rigging there. Whoever it was has had time to make a getaway. Whoever it was is still aboard this ship, Mr. Kent. I'll have the Clara M search from stem to stern. Good idea, Captain. If you find out anything, I'll be in Jimmy's cabin. All right. Hmm. Wish I knew what's in that man's mind. Well, let me get on into the cabin and see how Jimmy's going. There, lad, was a murder shot coming for the native boy. I saw the monster turn, Billy upward. Saw his great mouth reaching for the boy. And it was then I went into action. What's going on here? Oh, gosh, Mr. Kent, don't interrupt. Uh, go on, Mr. Barnaby. Well, I dove off the side of that pearl fisher. In my hand was a knife, which I always carried with me. I struck for the shark's belly. But he turned too quick. And the knife went into his back, up to the hill. Then he dove. And I went with him, holding on to that knife handle. Blast my eyes up. I was underwater a full five minutes. Five minutes? Hey, lad, five minutes. Gee. Well, I I finally got the knife out of his back, and I struck for his belly again. But this time, he was too quick for me. He left to windward and took my leg off clean as a whistle. Gosh. Well, what happened then? Well, I, I don't rightly remember, lad. Next thing I knew, I was lying on the deck of the pearl fisher. Oh, but how'd you get there? Well, lad, it was often I puzzled my head about that, but never could figure it out. However, the answer was made clear to me this very night. I must have been <laughs> saved by Superman. Uh, quite a story, Pete. Mm, I thought you were telling me the real story of how you lost your leg. Well, okay. Both of you can kid all you want to about Superman, but I know he exists. That's all that matters to me. Uh, find anyone in the rigging, Mr. Kent? No, whoever it was had ample time to get away. The captain's having the ship searched thoroughly. Yeah, good idea. Now, Jimmy, try to go to sleep, will you? And if you hear the whistler again, I'd suggest you call me before doing anything about it. Don't worry, I will. Uh, good night. Coming, Barnaby? I'll walk with you as far as my cabin. Good hey, night, lad. Was that really the way you lost your leg, Mr. Barnaby? A shark, I mean? No, lad. It wasn't no shark. I'll tell you the real story someday. Good night, dear. Good night. I wouldn't fill Jimmy's head with too many stories, Barnaby. No fear, Mr. Kent. So does the boy no harm? No, I suppose not. Uh, well, what do you make of this, uh, Superman business? The lad... No broken bones, and he peeped out from the rig. Well, I can't account for it, but he may not have fallen as far as he thought. Eh? Well, I'll leave you here. I'm going below. Good night, Barnaby. Good night. Well, I guess I'd better turn in myself. Oh, wait a minute. 
Is that God? I wonder. I'm going to have a talk with the man at the wheel. Uh, good evening. Good evening, sir. Uh, beautiful night, isn't it? Hey, it is, sir. Uh, what's our course? Uh, by east, sir. South by east? Hey, sir. You're off your course, then, helmsman. What? According to the position of the North Star, you're steering south by west. I, I, I can't be, sir. I... Well, look at it. I got it, sir. You're right. Now, how could I do a thing like that? That... What I was wondering. Better put her over. Hey, sir, at once. And thank you, sir. Meant me late if the captain had found me. Thank you, sir. You're welcome. Good night. Good night, sir. That man's either a fool or he was deliberately off his course. And I don't think he's a fool. Is Kent right? Was the helmsman deliberately off his course? And if so, why? And what is the answer to the mystery of the Whistler? What strange adventures await our friends aboard the Clara M? Be sure to hear the next thrilling episode of our story with Superman. Tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky! Look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Up in the sky! Look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men, and who fights a never-ending battle against crime and injustice, Disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan newspaper. Clark Kent and Jimmy Olsen are now on a round-the-world cruise aboard the Clara M, last of the clipper ships. Already, only a few days out, many strange and baffling adventures have befallen them. Adventures which seem to have no answer. Superman, in the guise of Clark Kent, has discovered many odd things aboard ship. and is keeping an eye particularly on the first mate, Teak Barnaby, so-called because he wears a peg leg made of teak wood. In our last episode, Kent was just about to retire to his cabin when he discovered that the helmsman was off his course. So far off his course that it was obvious to Kent he was doing it deliberately. Listen. This man's either a fool or he was deliberately off his course. And I don't think he's a fool. I'd better talk to Captain Hawkins about this, and I'd better do it right now. I come in, Captain. It's Clark Kent. By all means, Mr. Kent. I almost know this a chat before turning in, Mr. Kent. More than just a chat, Captain. Hey, something still troubling you? A good deal. Captain, what I expected to be more or less of a pleasure cruise is rapidly becoming a headache. I... I don't take your meaning, Mr. Kent. Excuse my bluntness, Captain, but I believe you do. Now, look here. Just a moment. I spoke to you earlier tonight about the strange things going on aboard this ship, and you pretended to know nothing about them. I did nothing of the sort. I merely refused to believe in such stupid nonsense as this legend of the Whistling Sailor. I don't believe in superstitions, Mr. Kent, and therefore I don't believe that the spirit of a Whistling Sailor comes back to haunt this ship. I don't believe it either. But someone is definitely trying to give the impression that he does. How much do you know about Teak Barnaby, your first mate? All I know is he's a good sailor. And that's all I care to know about any member of my crew. I'm afraid in this case that's not enough. Haven't you ever thought how strange it was that after so many men refused to sign on, Barnaby came along with a full crew in less than an hour? It's happened before. Are you accusing my first mate? I make no accusations until I can prove them, Captain. What course are we following? South by East for Panama. Mm-hmm. And perhaps you can explain why the man at the wheel was following a course set south by west. I don't believe. I know a little something about navigation, Captain Hawkins. And I'm telling you, your helmsman was steering a course south by west. What I want to know is why. I still don't believe it. But there's only one way to find out. Come along, Mr. Kent. We'll see about this right now. Ah. Well, there's a storm coming. Well, the wind is kicking up a bit. Looks like a bad one, too. Better have the hatches battened down. Yeah. Helmsman's on his course all right now, Mr. Kent. 
Yes, but I don't think he'll deny having been offered. You'd better question him. I will, indeed. You there, helmsman. Aye, sir. Mr. Kent informs me you were off your course. Well, were you or weren't you? Aye, sir. I, I was that. Huh? Explain that. Well, I... I kind of hard to explain, sir. The first time such a thing's happened to me in 30 years of sailing. That's no explanation. Your course is south by east. Mr. Kent says you were steering south or west. That's a full quarter turn of the rudder. Hi, sir. Well? I, I, I can't explain it, sir. Unless I was kind of dozing off, sir. You were awake when I talked to you. You got a galloping tongue. That'll do. Hi, sir. Hi. The only way I can explain it, sir, is that I, I must have dozed off at, at which time I got off my course. And then when I woke up, it appears like mayhap I didn't realize. I'll have no sleeping on duty. Understand that? Hi, sir. Sorry, sir. I'll let it go this time. But if it happens again, you'll go in irons and no mistake. Aye, sir. Now mind your wheel. Well, Mr. Kent, I hope that puts your fears at rest. The helmsman got off his horse when he fell asleep. It won't happen again. I hope not. Well, good night. Good night, Mr. Kent. How he ever caught on. You fool. Why didn't you shift your course when you saw him coming? How was I to know he knew anything about navigation? The land lover, ain't he? He's smarter than most. You might have realized it. We've got to be careful. He mustn't find out we've changed our course until it's too late for him to do anything about it. Well, I didn't. Never mind what you think. The next time he gets too close to you, shift your course for Sabah East. Aye. He's going into his cabin for the night. You can put her over to Sabah West now. Aye, sir. Wait, 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 wait. Maybe I was wrong about the helmsman, but somehow I've got a feeling that I wasn't. Well, time will tell. Better get on into my cabin. Where is that light? What? Whoever's in this cabin, stand where you are. Light. Yeah, there we are. Well, I'll be... What are you doing in my cabin, Mr. Barnaby? Oh, don't go off the handle, Mr. Kent. I can explain everything. Better start right now, Barnaby. Well, I know it looks kind of strange to you, my being in your cabin like this, but the captain gave orders here, remember, to search the ship for the whistler. Well? I've been searching the cabin, looking in closets and under beds and all that, you know. Didn't think you'd mind if I had a look around. Around your cabin, matey? You usually look for something in the dark? Now, oh, heave to, matey. You're off your course. I can see you don't trust me. I have little reason to trust you, Barnaby. Now, oh, matey. It's just that I didn't have time to put on the light. Only came into this cabin a few minutes before yourself. Now that the light is on, well, I'll just have a look around. Don't bother. I'll search this cabin myself. Yeah, as you like, matey. I'll be leaving you. Yeah, a good deal going on aboard this ship that I don't understand. I have a feeling I won't get far by questioning the crew or anyone else. Perhaps it wouldn't do any harm if I took a quick trip back to Metropolis and did a little investigation around the waterfront. Might pick up some information of value, something that might give me just the clue I need as to what's going on aboard the Clara M. As Superman, I can fly back to Metropolis, make my investigation, and return to the ship before anyone has a chance to know my absence. Storm struck us at last. Well, nothing to worry about. This is the Clara M's first storm, and it won't be her last. So, up! Up! Aye, she is that, mister. Not to worry us, however. I've sailed the clarion through worse than this. Hatches button down. Aye, sir. Well, now we've got to reef sail. This gale is too much. Aye, sir. Stand by the wind for braces. But try me there. He's off the head sheet. He's off the head sheet. Flatten the head sheet. Right, sir. I just try to see horses. 
Put your backs to it. Stand to it. Stand to it. Barnaby. Barnaby. Better take a reef in the mains. Hey, sir. Hutchins. Mackery. On board. Down. A lot to the mains, lads. Move, you monkeys. Move. A lot with you. A lot. Oh, there's a big one coming. Man to the wheel there. Helm up. Helm up. Captain. Captain What the? Man, what are you doing on deck? I, I couldn't sleep, sir. I went to look for Mr. Kent. He's not in his cabin, sir, and I thought he might be on deck. Well, he's not. Get below, lad, and hold fast. Hold fast, lad. There's a big one. Find your helm, man. Lash your right, Stephen. Up helm. Up helm. Got a reef more sail, mister. In there. All of you. A lot to the top down. Lively now. Lively. All right, you'd better get below. I, I don't think I can make it. I see you've taken up worse since you got here. Here, here, give me a hand. What are you doing, Mr. Barnaby? They've got a lash into the brace. Making no chances on you going oversight. Hold fast. Hold fast. Here she comes. Barnaby, what was that? Right, my eyes, the anchor cable slipped. You men there on the windows. Get that anchor up before she bashes in the side. Come on, up to it. Put your backs into it. Now then, all together. Eee! Eee! I can't touch it. The windows are stuck. Ah, oh, that devil take you all for a bunch of... Here, let me near that. Now then, all together. Eee! That's it all. How about it, Mr. Barnaby? Well, they're right, sir. She's jammed. We can't get the anchor up there. Listen to that. It's the anchor. Swing it against the hull. We've got to get that anchor up or lash her down, mister, before we're snowed in. We'll never get her up. Blast my eyes. Someone's got to go overside and lash her down. That's suicide. Anybody gets caught between the side of the ship and that anchor, he'll be cracked. Stop it. What? You ain't going to try it. Someone's got to do it. But that flaccid ankle will break a hole in us big enough to send us to the bottom. Stand clear, man. I'm going over the side. Well, things seem to have taken a turn for the worse aboard the Clara M. Can that tremendous anchor be lashed down in time to save the ship? And what will happen while Superman is speeding toward the far-off city of Metropolis? Be sure to hear the next thrilling episode of our story with Superman. Tune in the next thrilling installment of the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky, look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! Superman is a copyrighted feature appearing in Action Comics magazine. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman! Look! It's a plane! It's a plane! It's Superman! And now, Superman, strange visitor from the planet Krypton, who came to Earth with powers and abilities far beyond those of mortal men, and who, disguised as Clark Kent, mild-mannered reporter for a great metropolitan...